My brothers and sisters, may the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Similarly, as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking and buying and selling and planting and building. On the day when Lot left Sodom, fire and brimstone rained from the sky to destroy them all. So it will be on the day the Son of Man is revealed, and whose belongings are in the house must not go down to get them. And likewise, one in the field must not return to what was left behind. Remember the wife of Lot, Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses it will save it. I tell you, on that night there will be two people in one bed, and one will be taken and the other left. And there will be two women grinding meal together, and one will be taken and the other left. And they said to him in reply, Where, Lord? He said to them, Where the body is, there also the vultures will gather. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't particularly care for the closing line of this gospel text today, where the body is there, also the vultures will gather. And so I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing rather on a line in the very center of the, of the gospel text. One who lo uh, loses his life will save it. The one who tries to save his life will lose it. And surely we look at the example of many of the saints in our, our history. These are people precisely who realize the ultimate value of what they should give their lives for. And many of them indeed gave everything that they had, literally, so as to ensure that they would have ultimately that eternal life. We heard of one yesterday, St. Margaret of Scotland, and today we remember in a special way St. Elizabeth of Hungary, who is of the same mindset. Uh, she was born back in the uh, 13th century and uh, was born in the year 1207, and she died in the year 1231, so she only lived 24 years. And even though she was only for 24 years on this earth, she did phenomenal things during the course of that short period of time. As a young girl, she married Louis the Landgrave of Thuringia, and she gave birth to three children, and she devoted herself to prayer and meditation. And after her husband's death, she embraced a life of poverty, erecting a hospital in which she herself served the sick. Her spiritual director, Conrad of Marburg, gives us a little excerpt in the Office of Readings this morning that lets us have an insight as to what this Elizabeth was like. He writes, from this time onward, Elizabeth's goodness greatly increased. She was a lifelong friend of the poor and gave herself entirely to relieving the hungry. She ordered that one of her castles should be converted into a hospital in which she gathered many of the weak and feeble. She generously gave alms to all who were in need, not only in that place, but in all the territories of her husband's empire. She spent all her own revenue from her husband's four principalities and finally she sold her luxurious possessions and rich clothes for the sake of the poor. Twice a day in the morning and the evening, Elizabeth went to visit the sick. She personally cared for those who were particularly repulsive. To some she gave food, to others clothing, some she carried on her own shoulders and performed many other kindly services. Her husband of happy memory gladly approved of these charitable works. Finally, when her husband died, she sought the highest perfection. Filled with tears, she implored me to let her beg for alms from door to door. On Good Friday of that year, when the altars had been stripped, she laid her hands on the altar in a chapel in her own town where she had established the Friar's Mitre. And before witnesses, she voluntarily renounced all worldly display and everything that our Savior in the Gospel advises us to abandon. Even then she saw that she could still be distracted by the cares and worldly glory which had surrounded her while her husband was alive. Against my will, she followed me to Marburg. Here in the town, she built a hospice where she gathered together the weak and the feeble. And there she attended the most wretched and contemptible at her own table. Apart from those active good works, I declare before God that I have seldom seen a more contemplative woman. When she was coming for private prayer, some religious men and women often saw her face shining marvelously and light coming from her eyes like the rays of the sun. Before her death, I heard her confession. 
When I asked what should be done about her goods and possessions, she replied that anything which seemed to be hers belonged to the poor. She asked me to distribute everything except one worn out dress in which she wished to be buried. When all this had been decided, she received the body of the Lord. And afterward, until Vespers, she spoke often of the holiest things she had heard in sermons. And then she devoutly commended to God all who were sitting near her. And as if falling into gentle sleep, she died. Elizabeth gives us a classic example of giving one's life for the sake of those around us.